What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Manor Road Studio, home of the Alive Podcast. I'm Dale, the self-proclaimed amazing genius. Okay. Uh, behind me is the Dream Sign, which I absolutely love. Right here with me always is the Hope Rock. Hanging on the wall over here is when you feel like quitting. Remember why you started. And the one sign that you can't see is a huge sign that says Alive. This is the Alive Podcast, which stands for Authentic Love, Imagination, Victor, and Evolve. Today, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about victor versus victim mentality. Before we get into it, though, if you're not familiar with uh, the podcast or anything I do, please subscribe, hit the like button, share it with your family and friends, leave me comments. I always care about what people have to say. Uh, Whatever topics you've got going on in your life and you want me to discuss them here online, let's do it. I mean, you know, life is a uh, life can be a tough journey sometimes, and we get stuff off our chest and get it out in the open. Who the heck knows? We might can do something amazing. Anyway, today I want to talk about stress. Think about this: in the morning when you get up and put your feet on the floor, you've got a choice of living your life between a one or a ten. Or at least choosing to start your day at 1 or 10. 1 being the worst, 10 being the best. Now, I choose to start my day at level 10 every day of the week. And I try hard to stay at that level. And I also try hard to bring other people up to that level when I encounter folks during the day. What about you? Do you choose to start at 1, 2, 3, 4? Hell, some people even, what I call, pre-plan their stress. They get up and they go, Ugh, you just have no idea what I got to do today. So they're already thinking that their day's going to be operated less than level 5, maybe even level 1. They planned it out that way. And, you know, the old saying, you know, uh, what the mind can conceive, the body will achieve. Well, it stands true in negative thinking and victim mentality as well. So get this. This person gets out of bed. They're already stressed about the world. So they go and they do what? They turn the news on. Now, that's enough to stress anybody out. I personally don't watch the news. If there's something I want to learn about, I'll read about it. Other than that, I darn sure ain't going to turn the news on in the morning to allow that to pull my day down. No, I'm going to get on a platform like YouTube, listen to something motivating and uplifting. Probably my favorite would be an Ed Millett video. Somebody that's going to challenge you to be the best you can be. But no, some people don't do that. So don't pre-stress or at least don't pre-plan your stress. Give yourself the ability to notch it up a little bit. Choose to operate at a higher level. And it is a choice. I mean, everywhere we turn, people are stressed out. You go to a restaurant. It's got a 20-minute waiting list. That stresses you out. You turn to your friend and go, where did everybody come from? Why are they here? Think about it. They're people. Why are you there? They're in the same line you're in. Maybe all of them aren't stressed out, but they probably are. You know, if I go somewhere and i got to wait in line, I'm going to wait in line and be happy. Why would I choose to be anything but? Another interesting phenomenon that adds stress for our life, and that's a beautiful day where you're living. We're going we're gonna to pretend this. It's a beautiful day where you're living, but there's bad weather somewhere else in the country. So you turn on the weather channel and you want to see all the bad weather that's happening somewhere besides where you live. And heaven forbid, there's bad weather coming your way because then you become so fixated on the weather channel that you want to know every moment of every second what's happening. Could you imagine that we've become human robots, zombies to a television? But people have. That's how stressed out we make our lives. And social media, good gracious alive, 
if we had a board behind me and it said victim mentality, victor mentality, and we could just put checks under each, social media, to me, ought to deserve about 10 negative checks, not positive. Now, I operate my platforms on level 10. I operate my platform as positive as I possibly can because I'm a lover of life. That offends some people. Some people don't want you pouring cold water on their parade. They enjoy feeling bad because it brings others around them that can feel bad with them and they can see who can feel the worst. You don't believe me? Scroll through your Facebook or Twitter feed or Instagram feed and you just look at what people, maybe even yourself, are talking about. You know, I use the analogy all the time. You're driving along. Somebody pulls up in front of you in traffic. You get on social media and go, to a guy in the red truck that just pulled out in front of me in traffic. Now, you know darn well you're not talking to the guy in the red truck. You're posting some victim mentality thinking, hoping others will chime in and validate that thinking with you. Why post anything? We all make mistakes in life. You do too. You pulled out in front of somebody yourself and I'm more than likely somebody went on Facebook and talked about you too. But I don't understand it. When negative things happen in life, the last thing you need to do is publicize it so you have to keep reliving it and keep resurrecting it every day. Why in the world do you want to put meat and skin on skeletons that are already gone? to add more stress to life. I mean, come on, why not? Think about the things you, you put on social media and you read about others. Oh, woe is me. I scratched my toe. My son stepped on a bug today. Okay, wow, gee whiz. I gotta go to the doctor tomorrow and have a spot looked at. Okay. You know, we're all going to the doctor. I'm a stage four cancer guy. I unfortunately go to the doctor about every two weeks. And the only way I'll ever post anything about one of my doctor visits is if I can find some humor in it or I can find a way to live alive in it. And I'm going to choose Victor thinking in every doggone thing I do. You know, back to social media. You know, we, we talked about pity parties earlier. And man, people love them. They love to throw their pity out there on social media so somebody can go, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. And this thread can get long. I mean, it can get to 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 people chiming in on their victim mentality. Trust me, it ain't lifting nobody up. It's just validating where they're already at. They're already operating below level five. Hell, they might as well go on to level one. They chose it. And then when they post it, they choose it again. You know, it's so crazy. You know, can you think about this? You just pulled out of a drive through and you ordered a Coke. They accidentally gave you tea. You sipped it, got upset, and accidentally spilled the tea. So you had two whammies there. Before you can do anything else, you go, I gotta find a parking place. I gotta get this on Facebook. That's how silly life has become. That's how stressed out we make ourselves. You know, life has challenging situations. There's no question about it. And I feel like in my own life, you know, from having a nephrostomy tube, having an NG tube stuck up my nose, having more catheters than I, than I care to count. I've had more tests, radiation, chemo, you name it, but I didn't stress about any of it. I really didn't. In everything that I faced, I found a way to live alive and grow from it. You know, even when the mountains of doctor bills come in, that's enough to stress anybody. Because no matter what happens, we still have to buy groceries. We still have car payments and house payments. Bills still have to be paid, so what do we do? Yeah, it's, it's a tough time. And yes, it can be a stressful moment. 
But we can't allow that to guide our life. We've got to find a, find a way to win in whatever we're in. You can do it. Look at the people you hang around. Look at the people you follow on social media. If you follow people that always post something that's dramatic, remember, you're contributing to the drama. Because there's three things about drama. Drama never, ever, ever, ever just happens to you. You either invent it, participate in it, or associate with it. That's pretty powerful. So when you choose to participate with drama, you're adding undue stress to your life. There's no reason to. And God forbid, don't throw a pity party, because all you're doing is inviting other people to throw one bigger than yours. And then you got perpetual pity going. We got to learn to live, lift people up. Help people live in the moment. Now, you know, one thing is I, I get to visit a couple of major hospitals quite frequently uh, due to cancer and checkups and uh, treatment and so forth. And it's always neat that when you're sitting in the waiting room, with other cancer fighters and caregivers, they're no longer stressful. They've learned to appreciate life in the moment. So somewhere in the back of their head, they know that the sands in the hourglass are falling and they're not falling in their favor. So if I'm going to live, I better do it now. Why not choose to live your whole life that way? Crap's going to keep happening. It's going to happen every single day. Somebody's going to pull out in front of you. You're going to get the wrong order. Somebody rude's going to check you out in a retail establishment. You're going to be rude to somebody. It doesn't mean you have to choose to live your life anywhere below level 10. That's the challenge. Where do you want to be? Do you want to live your life alive? Or do you want to be in the land of the dead? You know, one of the saddest things in the world is not death. It's being dead while you're alive. Helen Keller used to say, there's something worse than losing your eyesight, and that's losing your vision. Let's reestablish your vision for life. Let's move from victim thinking to victor thinking. And it takes consciousness and awareness to do that. But your life's worth it. It really is worth it. And there's so much joy to be lived, no matter the circumstances you're in. That's your challenge today. Start living alive. Think about everything you do. It can be in one or two categories. What I'm doing, what I'm saying, what I'm posting, I'm either being a victim or I'm being a victor. And if you're posting something or saying something or doing something that's going to place you in the victim column, simply don't do it. It's that easy. Hey, I invite all your comments. I love hearing from you. Uh, you can contact me at dalechilders at icloud.com. You can leave comments right here on my YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook. I'm posting wonderful, uplifting quotes every day of the week, multiple times. Uh, so, you know, if you just need something positive in your life, you need a little reinvigoration, you know, come see me. I'd love to hear from you. And until tomorrow, keep living alive.